Hey guys, today I'm going to be telling you why I vehemently despise the keto diet. I've got some carbohydrates, lots of carbohydrates here, and I'm gonna sit here and eat some while I tell you why I hate the keto diet. The first reason I hate the keto diet, it promotes animal cruelty. Why? Because people think that they need animal flesh to lose weight, and that is not what you need. What you really need is carbohydrates. Number two reason why I hate the keto diet, it will show you very quick, fast results that are unsustainable. So. Before I went vegan, when I was in high school, I was recovering from an eating disorder, but I was also able to uh, try a bunch of fad diets to try and get rid of my recovery rebound weight. What that ended up doing was it just had me yo-yoing back and forth between 60 and 30 pounds. It wasn't pretty. It wasn't pretty. When I was in high school, I used to believe that, like, if I was eating crackers, that I was gonna get really fat. Or if I ate any fruit, I would get really fat. And I knew that, like, the Atkins diet existed, but I never really thought about what veganism was. Um, and I never really thought about the animals, so. Another reason why I hate the keto diet is because it is a marketing strategy, right? And it's sort of, I think it's cruel, and that's why companies love to market things as keto-friendly, and they love the keto diet. So the reason they, they love the keto diet is because, think about it, if something's gonna give you short-term results and then make you fat again, you're going to probably need to continue to purchase fad diet products because you are praying and hoping that they will be the magic pill that will help you in your weight loss journey. When in reality, all you needed were some carbohydrates. There are a couple of diets that I adhere to, not religiously, but in concept. So my favorite being the raw till four diet. I lost 60 pounds on the raw till four diet. Freely is incredible. She knows the truth. Raw foodists know the truth. I don't know if you guys are aware, there's this like, woman and she is like in her late seventies and she looks incredible and she grows her own fruit, and I can play you a clip. And, and here we have some ginger. Annette Larkins shows off her garden in her Miami-Dade County backyard. It's full of fruits and vegetables. Every corner of her garden has something that is edible. And I've been eating them and they're so good. She also collects rainwater to drink and water her plants. Annette says the food in her garden is her fountain of youth. I'm very vibrant. I have lots of energy, as I told you before. I'm up at uh, no later than 5.30 in the morning as a rule, and I'm ready to go. Annette's husband owned a meat store in the 1960s. That's when she became a vegetarian. But as the years went by, she became a raw vegan. She does not eat any animal products. Her food is unprocessed and uncooked. My diet consists of fruits, nuts, vegetables, and seeds. I do a lot of sprouting of seeds. And as you can see from my garden, of course, these are the raw foods that I eat. Annette also juices fruits and veggies. You name it, she can juice it. Grapefruits, pineapples, even spinach. But not everyone in the Larkins family eats and drinks this way. Annette's husband of almost 54 years chose to continue to eat the way he did when they were first married. I really wish I would have uh, did what she's done. Amos Larkin says people even wonder if Annette is his wife. They'll ask me what am I doing with a young girl. Or uh, they'll say, you got your granddaughter with you. You know, and uh, <laughs> things like that, you know. 
Amos takes prescription medicines daily for high blood pressure and diabetes. Annette says she doesn't even take an aspirin. Because friends and strangers kept asking her questions about her health and youthful appearance, she decided to publish two Journey to Health booklets, and she produced the DVD 12 years ago. The Discovery Channel, they had me to, they took sections of the booklet and translated them into Spanish, which, by the way, is my second language. So how old is this size four beauty? Annette just turned 70 years old. This one lady who is my age, she said, to, you know, to, was telling her friend that I used to tell them about eating and they wouldn't listen. And she, her, her uh, reply was to that or her response to that was, uh, look at her now and look at us. She's an amazing person though. Oh man. I mean, I mean, really, she do everything. I mean, build computers. Oh, she's make all her own clothes, grow her own food, speak three languages. You know, I, it's amazing. Now, Annette has been eating completely raw for 27 years. And we want to remind everyone, no matter how old you think she really looks, she changed her lifestyle to feel better and have a good quality of life. And long-term results are what really matter. I only work out like three times a week. It's all cardio. I make myself muffins, and I make myself banana breads, and I make myself cookies, and I just try to reduce the amount of fat that I put in them. When I cook, I try to use non-stick sprays. Um, I'm really partial to uh, avocado oil, if I am going to use an oil. I try to use non-stick pans. Oil's not a health food. Neither is cheese, and neither is meat. Animal flesh is not a health food. It's not something you need. Water and carbohydrates and fruit and vegetables. My entire stomach right now is full of rice, some tofu, some vegetables, and some potatoes. It's not that hard. Something that keto dieters will say is that they don't want to gain weight. Because if you have a messed up metabolism, you're going to gain weight when you start eating carbohydrates. Because you've starved your body of carbohydrates. So your body's going to like scream out for the carbohydrates, hold on to them, hydrate. Your cells are probably going to hydrate. You know, they're, they're really needy. Needy cells, they need their water. They want their carbs. And then once it realizes that it's no longer a famine state, it's gonna be like, oh, we're not in a famine state. There's plenty of plentiful calories where the body, this body is. So I guess we don't have to hold on to everything. And then that's what it does. It will just naturally shed the pounds off. I'm currently 140 pounds and I don't work out very often, three, time, three days a week. I am a reformed fat chick cell for cell a plant is so far and different from our genetic makeup in comparison to animal flesh so a pig's fat is cellularly closer to our fat so it's easier to store in comparison to say the fat of an avocado I have a friend, my buddy CJ, and he's really into medieval fairs. And we had a conversation. He's not vegan, but he respects my vegan diet. We had a conversation and he, we were talking about how in the medieval times, people ate things like mince pies and they would make like meat and lard and berry, like, energy bars and things like that. These are things that they would bring with them on battle, but this was because it was a time of famine. In the medieval times, I suppose I can understand where they were coming from, but we no longer live in the medieval times. 
We live in a time of excess. We do not live in a time of famine, especially in first world countries. We live in abundance. So if we're living in abundance, our bodies should be representing the abundance that we're living in. The problem with the abundance that we're living in is there's an abundance of processed foods that aren't very good for us. And those are widely available. Um, though the healthy options are also widely available, the information is not making it to the general public. I personally believe that like a serving size of a watermelon should be this much. This should be a serving size. Now whether you eat it once a week, whether you eat it a couple days, over the course of a couple of days, that's fine. You should get at least, you know, half a watermelon into you once a week. Or if not a watermelon, some bananas. Or if not some bananas, you should get kiwis or blueberries or anything. Fruit. You need to get fruit into your life. It heals you. It's one of the most healing foods. I can't speak more positively to the benefits of fruit. If I have an acne breakout and I eat half a watermelon, the acne subsides within like 24 to 48 hours. Cooked food, I, you know, there's a lot of people who think cooked food isn't good for you. I would say processed food isn't the best for you. But even processed food, you'd be better eating a bowl of soy milk and frosted flakes than you would be eating like a vegan sausage per se, just because of the amount of fat that's in that meal, which is why I laugh when people say that like bacon and eggs is a healthy breakfast. That's like a cholesterol bomb. I can't get behind it. I'm high carb but my, my goal is to start eating significantly more fruit because it's what makes me feel good. It's what makes my body look good. It's what gives me energy to knock out three, four miles at the gym, which I couldn't have dreamed of ever doing before I went vegan. Any diet that tells you that bacon is healthy is probably not a good long-term solution. Red meat is not healthy. It's the number one cause of heart disease. Unless your red meat is red watermelon meat, you probably shouldn't be consuming it. It's something I've been really pondering really about people who do keto diets is this correlation between their, it goes sort of like in a cycle they start a keto diet, then they start drinking skinny teas, then they gain weight, and then they do it all over again. It's sort of like, start a keto diet, start drinking skinny teas, lose like 5 or 10 pounds, binge out, and then repeat the cycle. I think the best piece of advice that I ever learned from watching High Carb Vegans was to cut coffee out of my diet. I know this sounds weird, but like, getting your energy from carbohydrates is so much more fulfilling and satisfying than getting your energy from stimulants. People who think it's crazy to eat a high-carb diet. Do you see this hair? It's all healthy. It's all clean. It's natural. Results. Show me your long-term results before you tell me that what I'm doing is wrong.